What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365Deek, and today I'm talking about Power Automate, I'm talking about expressions, and I'll talk about the add hours function in the date and time functions collection. So add hours allows you to pass in a string, a timestamp string, and then add a number of hours onto that and also format it. If you watch the last couple of videos and things like add minutes and add seconds, it's a lot like those, but we'll just uh, we'll show you how to use this one today. So I'm here in Power Automate. I've got a manual trigger flow and I've got a compose action here. Uh, in the inputs, um, I can click into inputs and go over to expression. Then I can scroll down until we get to date and time. Click see more and then scroll down to this function. So it says add hours. So this has three parameters. This is a timestamp. Uh, hours and format with a question mark. So what this allows you to do is you pass in a timestamp uh, in a string, then you specify the number of hours that you want to add, and then you have this optional format um, parameter at the end. So the, the reason it's not a question mark is means it's an optional parameter, you don't need to pass it in, but if you do pass it in, you can um, format it in a specific way. So if we click uh, add hours, uh, it goes into the expression editor bar at the top, uh, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use UTC now, but you can pass in a time string from a timestamp from somewhere else um, as long as it's a string. So you can pass in um, one from SharePoint or CDS uh, or Excel or SQL or anywhere um, as long as you can get that data. But for now, we're just trying to use UTC because it's a bit easier for me to test. Then it's asking for a integer, um, so I could put um, number seven, and that'll add seven hours onto this. Then and that's all I need. Um, the format is a, is a completely optional parameter that I can pass in. So if I click OK, that goes into add hours there. Click on test. I'll perform the trigger action. Save and test. Run the flow. Click done. Flow runs successfully, that's great. And we can see the output is this. So at the time of recording, it is the 30th of uh, January. 2020 and it's currently six, uh, seven o'clock in the evening. Um, I'm recording this in the UK, so we're currently uh, at UTC. Um, and all flows run at UTC, so we're taking this, so I'm going to be passed in the UTC parameter. Um, so we're taking the UTC, which is the current time, and then adding six hours onto it, which uh, equals uh, uh, 2 a.m., just after 2 a.m. Um, so this comes out uh, in the UTC style format, so we've got um, 2020, so that's the year, um, hyphen the month, hyphen the day. Then we have a T for time, then we've got the hours, the minutes, the seconds, and then the nanoseconds, followed by Z for Zulu uh, at the end, to denote the end of the time, parameter, uh, time string. Now, one of the things we can do is we can actually add some formatting into here. Um, so if I uh, put another comma next to that, I can then add in a, um, a format to this. As you can kind of see, it's popped up with a little handy um, tooltip to say um, optional, either a single format specified character or a custom format pattern that indicates how to format the value of this timestamp. If format is not provided, the ISO uh, 8601 format O will be used. So this actually uses that ISO standard to denote how you format time. So um, the ISO standard gives you a bunch of different um, sort of patterns or parameters that you can pass in and um, everything should always pass out in the same style according to that ISO standard. So it's currently saying um, that O is kind of like UTC style format that we saw. So what we can do is we can add in another one, so say um, G for instance, that'll do something or I could put in like, you know, YYYY dash MM dash DD to just do year, month, day. Um, or I could do any sort of combination of any of those, but I'm just trying to use G for now. We click update, then we'll hover over the add hours. We'll click on test um, and we'll save and test. We'll run the flow, click done, run successfully. And now we can see it's trying to format it slightly differently. So this is an American style format where we have the day first, uh, sorry, the month first, and the, followed by the day, followed by the year, and then we have a space, and then we have a non-24 hour clock, so just a regular 12 hour clock with an AM or a PM, um, you know, uh, parameter at the end or 
you know, specifier at the end. So that's how that formats. But the ISO standard dictates sort of all the styles of format format that you can use. So if you need this in a slightly different format, then you can format it that way. Um, if you want something a bit more readable, a bit more user friendly, uh, maybe you want to format it in a in a way that people understand. Um, again, if you have like a an organization that is sort of global, you may want different rules depending on locales. So you may want some for US with a US style format, uh, whereas the rest of the world uses um, the different style of format. So um, you might want to have sp specific rules for the US and then the rest of the world um, so you can get the dates out in the right way. So what do you guys think? Is add hours something that you use at the moment? Is it something you want to use in the future? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, please like and please share it with your friends. If you've not already, please hit me up on uh, social media. Uh, my details are at the end of this video. And I'll see you next time.